Yo, what is good, y'all? It's your boy, RC the Great. And yes, we are back with another playbook. I've been in the lab for the last couple weeks, and I got something special for y'all. We're getting ready to break down another full playbook, seven money plays that are going to help you out against users and CPU in NBA 2K21. So without further ado, make sure you guys head over to the auction house in my team if you're a my team player, and we're going to be picking up the current Pacers playbook, which is going very cheap right now. I got mine for about 500 MT, but right now you see one for 950. There's not many in the auction house, but these usually go pretty cheap. I checked them out before I made the video. Now, there are going to be seven different plays in here, and I'm going to break them down in entirety. I am going to have a timestamp in the bottom with all plays if you want to skip through the different plays, but I break down every option. If you're new to the channel, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, but make sure you watch each option for every play because i do break down what's needed to do to have success with each play in different scenarios but let's also look at my current team and i'm going to give you some suggestions on who i think is best to have on the floor or what type of player is best to have on the floor so first thing you're going to need a playmaker someone that's going to be able to maneuver around screens shoot the ball get to the basket and do different things around the court i like to have Kyrie or john stockton john stockton has hall of fame diamond plus he can dunk the ball in certain situations that i need and he can hit from deep so having that on the floor is very important then somebody like Manu Ginobili I like slashing to the basket off of pick and rolls being able to get to the basket threaten the hoop and then kick out if we need to so somebody like Manu's great you don't have to have him but he's a great choice then I have Paul Pierce as my sharpshooter he has range extenders so coming off of screens being able to shoot the ball at a high clip and make shots again you don't have to use Paul Pierce but somebody you're comfortable shooting with then you're going to need a shooting big for some of the plays we run. So you have a shooting big out there, somebody that can stretch the floor. Keep the defense honest if you're running some kind of five out scenario or scenario where you want your big to be coming off of screens. Then a specialty player, somebody like Giannis or Ben Simmons that's big but can call plays. So they have play calling ability, but they can run the power forward, small forward, center position. I like using Giannis for this kind of thing, and I'll explain why later on. Then I have another stretch big on the floor. He's not really a big, but Draymond Green is six foot seven. Can play the power forward or center and can stretch the floor if I'm running some sort of pick and fade or a play with five out where I want to stretch the floor. Now, again, these are just suggestions. This is just my team. If you want to know how I got this good of a team, check my market watch series because I explain how I, you know, make MT on pack days and stuff like that. But if you need to use budget cards, that's also going to work for you. So let's jump into the plays we're going to be talking about today. Fist five out eight. Give point four, give 35 elbow pitch. I leave pass and screen away in there for those of you who like the Hawks freelance. Then we got fist five short dive, fist 25 wide, give 42 rev, which is one of my favorites from previous playbooks, and fist 25 zipper. So we're going to break all these down in entirety. Let's jump right into it. The first play we're going to be going over is fist five out eight. It is a five out pick and roll play that I really, really like. And it looks really simple, but it is simple, but super effective. And I'm going to explain exactly why this is effective. So you see, we just get a basic pick and roll from our power forward. We get a nice dump off down low to KD. Looked easy, of course, but let's break down why it's going to be easy in both CPU and user game. So as you can see, our center is over there in the corner. Paul Pierce is lined on the right corner. And then we got Mono Ginobili on the wing. As soon as we call the play, we start off on either the right or left wing. We get a center pick and roll from our power forward. It is always going to be the power forward unless you change it. We have optimal spacing on the floor to work the middle of the floor with John Stockton. I can either take my shot right here if the defender does not step up. If the defender does step up, we then have the roll to KD going inside. If anybody helps, we have nice passing lanes to be able to get the ball out for an easy shot. We end up taking the nice dump off layup to KD and getting an easy bucket. Now let's break down several options of why this play is going to be very dangerous in competitive games and against CPU or even just casual games. So we come up, we hit a nice crossover to get us over that screen. And now we get help from the defender and we're shooting a three point shot with Giannis. Of course, you don't want to shoot with Giannis, right? That's OK. So right here, you want to make your move and go around the screen and make the defender have to step up once you get by your guard. Someone has to help or you have a clear lane to the basket. 
Once that help comes out, you identify who the open man is and you kick it out. Now, don't be too predictable and don't get baited. Be ready to take a layup or a dunk if it's given to you because they will try to bait that pass out, but it is gonna be there. Now, we sub KP into the game. This is where the magic actually happens. Now, our center can actually shoot the ball at a high clip and he's going right to the corner. You know he's going to be in the corner and your small forward is gonna be in the other corner. You get that kick out to your center, wide open off of the screen and roll. But I got something better for you guys. What if you have a center in the game that doesn't shoot the ball? How do you get him to be the person that's gonna set you the screen? You're gonna head over to the offensive settings, go to the play calling. When you press triangle to assign the play, just assign it to your center. So triangle to assign the player, scroll over to your center, press X, and now your center is going to be the person setting you the screen. This is perfect for guys that run the guys like Bob Lanier or anybody that is bigger and cannot shoot the ball. So now they are setting you the screen. Look at this, this KP setting me the screen. Now I got KD out on the wing, beautiful. And the reason why I like this play is because your players are going to be in the same spot every time you call this play. I cannot stress that enough. You call the play, you hit L1, you hit X, you know this is coming up, you know you're getting ready to get a screen, you don't have to call a screen, everybody's gonna be in the same spot, and you run the play how it should be run. There are many times where you call a screen, you wanna call fade, everybody's running around, you just call the play, they set up where they're supposed to be, now you have a slasher on the court, you can use your momentum dribble, get to the basket, throw your alley-oops, Everything is gonna work the same way and you know where everyone's gonna be on the court at the same time. So we got Manu in the game who's a better slasher. I recommend using your slashers for this. Now we got somebody in the game that can really attack the basket. If Hakeem Olajuwon steps up on me here, I'm gonna go tight off of this screen. Now look at the driving lane I take. I want you guys to check out this driving lane. I'm driving right down the center of the paint. That's gonna make Hakeem have to choose me or KP. And if the defender steps over, I'm giving myself enough room to kick it out to the wing. Now Hakeem is in the middle of me and KP. If he steps over to me, I'm giving it to KP. If he steps over to KP, I'm taking the layup. You're making them have to choose. You're reading and then you're reacting to the defense. All right, the last thing we're gonna go over here is not forgetting that you can shoot off of this. You wanna be able to threaten and shoot off of this. So if the defender gets clipped by the screen or if the defender goes under the screen, be ready to stop and take your shot. I have my quick stop tutorial or setting your feet tutorial um, that I did before I'll leave in the description, but check out um, Kenny Smith goes under the screen that KP set. Now I have tons of room. I hit L2. I stop and now I'm able to take my shot because they did not go over the screen. They didn't respect it. So if they go under the screen, we're shooting. If they go over the screen, we're trying to drive and run that pick and roll. All right, let's move on to play number two. This one is called give point four and it's gonna be a shooting option plus an isolation option on the left side. So as you can see right here, my man Paul Pierce is coming off a double screen and then we get the ball in the KP. Now John Stockton gets a little wrap around and he ends off with a screen from KP. Now, usually the play doesn't get that far. I do use that last option sometimes, which I'll explain, but the action you really wanna pay attention to right here is K, I mean, Paul Pierce coming off of these double screens, this double pin down. When he pops out, he's gonna have an opportunity for an open shot on the wing. That's a nice three point attempt with a great shooter. So I'm looking to see if my defender gets caught up in those screens. And if he does, I'm able to take this shot. Now, if he's closing out hard, I can easily fake, use my triple threat, and then I can attack the center of the lane and then look to kick out to Manu on the left side as well. So if that doesn't work, you get the ball in to KP or whoever your center is, and then your point guard is getting a cross screen. He's gonna come over to the right side. You can now kick the ball out right here for a three point attempt. This is another time you can get a three point shot off of this play. If you don't give it to him, he's going to wrap around you. This is a great opportunity for that backdoor cut. Make sure you watch my passing tutorial, which I will leave in the description. Could hold triangle there and get him into the lane. If he doesn't get into the lane, now you get another screen. That's gonna get you into the middle or pop you back outside. And you can just call the five out play and run the five out play right off of that. And now, of course, we got more options we're gonna discuss. So let's get into the first one, which is attacking off the dribble drive. So you wanna attack the opposite side of those screens. So attack the right side. I'm driving hard to the paint, looking for misdirection to get to the lane, but then also to take my defender's 
attention away from Paul Pierce coming off of those screens. So I'm driving to the lane hard. I'm trying to threaten the lane with my point guard to get a layup or a dunk. If anybody helps on the right, I can kick it out there. But now my defenders are not looking at Paul Pierce coming off of those screens. The defense is sucked inside and now I get an easy shot outside because everybody was collapsing into the lane. Now, John Stockton is great, but somebody like Manu is even better for this because we got this nice smooth behind the back move misdirection. We're getting into the lane. If the defender does not stop us, we have a nice lane to the basket, a nice easy layup. So we get our nice behind the back misdirection here. Paul Pierce is still coming off those screens, but the defense did not get into the lane fast enough. And now we're attacking the basket. Easy buckets, just like we like them. But if somebody did step over, we have the opportunity to kick out to either Paul Pierce or John Stockton on the wing. I like both of those options for three, but I like the easy two even better. All right, now let's get into some of the secondary options on this play and let's talk about those specialty positions, those specialty players I was talking about that can run these plays for you and why. So right here, we got Giannis running the play. He's at my center, but he's still able to call plays because he does have play calling enabled. Now look at why this is important. Giannis now gets that backdoor cut we hold triangle, get him into the lane easily. Once he goes around Draymond, we got a big body getting inside and we're able to finish strong at the basket because he was able to call that play. And the person calling the play is going to be the person hitting that backdoor cut. Anybody helps, we kick out for an easy three. All right, we're about to move on to the next play. The third play is called give 35 elbow pitch. And to be honest, this play is a little bit more cluttered. It's gonna be a beautiful play in like your simulation, casual or CPU games, but to use it in the comp setting, you're gonna to have to be very, very savvy on these cuts that you just saw happening. So let's break down the play on replay and I'm gonna show you some of the options you're gonna be looking for most likely when you're running this. All right, so getting into the replay, your first pass is entered into the power four who is KD for me. And immediately after that pass, you're gonna notice you have your small forward on that corner. Ginobili's on the wing and your center's on the low block. Your first cut is gonna be a backdoor cut from the point guard or whoever you call the play with. I'm looking to dump it inside the Stockton right there for a layup. And if Hakeem Olajuwon helps, I'm gonna give it over to Giannis. Now, if you have a shooting center, that's gonna be better right there. But look at the secondary cut we get with Ginobili cutting right after Stockton cuts. So right after John Stockton exits to the corner, Ginobili hits a backdoor cut. You can dump it in right there if you want to, or if you need to for your style. I would either throw an alley-oop or throw a bounce pass. If you don't get it into either of those, you're gonna get a dribble handoff to Paul Pierce or whoever your small forward is on the right side. And that's gonna either get you into the lane for a dump off to the center, or you can take a shot off of that. I backed out and then I just called the screen and kicked it out to KD. So let's run the play again, and we're gonna go over some different options with it on how you can make it effective. So again, we get our backdoor cut with Stockton. We choose not to get it to him, but we see Ginobili with a backdoor cut. KD feeds him for a nice pass, a nice assist for a dunk. But if your opponent is playing deny defense, these backdoor cuts are gonna be beautiful. Right here, we have Stockton getting into the lane. If Hakeem helped over and we had Porzingis or somebody on the right, I could have just kicked it over to Porzingis for a shot. But look at Ginobili on the backdoor cut. KD with the nice feed and we go up for a dunk. Hakeem is too slow to help over. If he does help over, Giannis has those long arms and I can throw an alley-oop, which I will show later on, showing you how to get that defense drawn over for a nice alley-oop attempt. So again, we're coming up the court. Stockton gets his backdoor cut. I back up with KD to threaten a three-point line. Then I bounce pass over to Ginobili. So again, I'm backing up with KD, drawing the defense out. Stockton gets his cut. I don't give it there. Ginobili is denied the ball. He gets a nice backdoor cut. Bounce pass. Hakeem helps over. I see the help coming. Giannis starts to step closer. I throw the alley-oop up, and we get a nice bucket. Easy feed, easy buckets. All right, now, once again, why are those specialty players beneficial? Those Ben Simmons, Lamar Odoms, and Giannis's, you can call this play with them. And the person you call the play with is the person hitting that backdoor cut. And since your opponent's most likely gonna be sagging off of Giannis, you want him cutting to the basket. They do not want those problems. Giannis cutting to the basket, they have to defend that. If they don't defend that, you're throwing that up for an alley-oop, and it's gonna work a lot of the time. So once Giannis hits that backdoor cut, watch and see if he clears, throw the alley-oop up. If not, he's gonna clear out to the left side and then you're gonna look for your secondary backdoor cut. All right, moving on to the next play. It is called fist five short dive. 
and it is going to be another misdirection pick and roll type of play as you can see we get into the lane with stockton nice kick out to kd for three but we want to definitely break down the action that's going on in this play to let you know what your some of your options are so right away off the left side of the screen you see paul pierce is making a backdoor cut getting himself into the lane you want to look out for that but the side that he cuts on you're going to be getting a ball screen on so always know the side that your small forward cuts on the ball screen's coming to that side so you want to misdirect to the right side and cut back to the left when i cut back to the left i get a ball screen from Giannis. he's going to pick and roll paul pierce is clearing out opposite right corner and then kd is standing in the left corner KD is going to relocate to the wing once you drive. That relocation stops the defense from being able to bait that pass back out to him. So you drive to the lane, the defense usually baits. If you're playing against somebody good at baiting, they're going to bait the corner. Since KD moves to the wing, they can't bait the corner now. You're able to kick it out for three. If they ran out towards KD, now you have an easier lane to the basket. Now I'm going to run this play again here with Ginobili because mine has Hall of Fame quick first step and he's the better slasher so I want to get to the lane with him. So I'm going to the right again off of that screen threatening the lane the defense helps and now I kick it out to that opposite corner for three because Paul Pierce has cleared out. First off I could throw an alley-oop there which we're going to go over but if we don't throw that after that screen you see my man's pinned on the screen. Hakeem has to step over. I already beat Hakeem to the basket so Clyde Drexler who was guarding Paul Pierce now has to stop me. If I don't get stopped, it's a bucket. So somebody has to pay here. It's either going to be the defense helping or I'm going to get a bucket. They help. I kick it out for three. Paul Pierce, wide open, opposite corner, great relocation. And now we get an open shot right off of that dribble drive, read and react. And now I recently reached level 33 in my team. So I bought my man Scotty Pippen in the game for this alley-oop display. And we are going to talk about the reason why you want to go to the right side first or the opposite side of the screen first. So let's get into the replay. Scotty Pippen's cutting on the left side. So I want to go to the right side first. Not only does it misdirect for the screen, it gives me a better passing lane to get the ball to this backdoor cut. If your opponent's playing denied defense, this backdoor cut is most likely going to be there a lot. So you drive to the right first to give yourself a nice angle and a nice passing lane to tap triangle twice and throw that ball up. Make sure your pass has a lob city passer make sure the receiver has a lob city finisher when you throw that up it's a great chance of it being completed scotty pippen breaks past clyde drexler goes up for the easy alley-oop jam if not i would have just ran the play and went around the screen because i already had the angle for the screen and of course another option is to just take it all the way ourselves with the ball handler if they're not going to stop us if they're not going to stop us from getting to the lane we have to be willing to take those easy layups we get inside with mono Easy buckets, beautiful basketball, and that moves us on to our next play, Fist 25 Wide, which is one of my favorites. This play has a lot going on, and it's very simple, but very effective because of the misdirection that it can create and then the pick and roll action after it. So we get our nice easy bucket in here with Giannis. Let's talk about why and how we ended up there. So we start off with a staggered little stack, uh, Ginobili on the right side, our small forward on the left, power forward at the high, and the center at the low post. Right away, we're getting a down screen for our shooting guard. As you can see, Ray Allen gets pinned down. At the same time, KD is setting up for a backdoor screen for our point guard. Right here, this is a shooting opportunity with you with your shooting guard. You can shoot that if your defender gets pinned down. If not, you're getting a ball screen at the same time your point guard's getting a backdoor screen. So you can throw that up for an alley-oop if you have somebody like Derrick Rose or that souped up John Stockton from my team or you can go around the ball screen that Giannis sets for you. And now you have a pick and roll opportunity after that happens. All right, so let's call it again. This time we have Ginobili on the court. He is calling the play. So he's gonna be the one going back door. So I get it out to Stockton. The Wayne Wade's all over me. I don't get the shot opportunity, but the Ginobili gets the back door cut on Ray Allen. So we kick it out to John Stockton. The Wayne Wade is all over me. He gets over that screen, but Ray Allen lags behind the screen for some reason. Katie's just standing there, didn't even set a good screen, but we still get the backdoor cut alley-oop available to Ginobili, and we're going to take that every time. All right, we're coming up the court with it again. This time, the defense lags a little bit behind. 
they get pinned down on the screen john stockton pops out we are able to set our feet turn all the way around and we hit a green from three john stockton you do not want to give him that much time out there it's going to be green and now we have my boy Giannis, that specialty player he is able to call the play what does that mean that backdoor cut's going to be nasty now we have john stockton on the pick and roll and Giannis rolling to the basket on the opposite end that's dangerous because now kd's rolling john stockton's threatening the basket and Giannis is threatening the basket all at the same time we can dunk we can dunk it to kd and we can throw it up to Giannis, which we do and he gets a nasty throw down easy buckets again all right last time with this play coming up with Giannis again we're running the play with him because again he's our specialty player he can call the plays we get the ball out to john stockton we're able to go hard off of the screen we take it to the basket for an easy dunk because he was not stopped on his way to the rim and now we're moving on to the next play give 42 rev now this play has a lot going on i am not even gonna lie make sure you guys are paying attention but if you call this play properly and you run this play properly, you can literally run it every single time down the court and you can get a bucket in one way or another. We're going to go over every single option that I like out of this play. All right. So coming up to court on the replay, notice everybody starts pretty high. And the first action you're going to get is double screens for your small forward curling around the top of the key. You can either use a control, push him inside. You can use a triangle cut or you can just directional pass him and hit the three there. Once he moves from there, he's going to clear out to the opposite corner and you are going to be receiving a ball screen from your center. You go around your ball screen. You can now choose to attack the lane, shoot the ball or pick and roll. If you don't do either of those, you now have the option to get it over to your power forward who can isolate on the right side of the court and take his man off the dribble. So you can either kick it in the Giannis on that pick and roll or give it over to your power forward. He can take his man off the dribble. If you don't do that, John Stockton is going to set a screen for your shooting guard. You can dribble handoff to your shooting guard now, which is going to create a situation where the defender's lagging behind you. You're driving to the basket with your center camped under the paint, and you can either throw it up for an alley-oop if the defense help or take it yourself. A lot of options, but we're going to go over every single one of them like we always do. Starting with the first shot you're going to be able to take is this shot to your small forward off of these double down screen so you get this double screen right here if the defense is pinned and you have this space especially with a sharpshooter that's an easy shot all day you want to be able to take that and make them rushing out to defend you on that play all right let's get into another scenario running the same play give 42 rev going through the whole play we got paul pierce coming around didn't give it to him there go around the screen from Giannis. get it over to kd KD dribble handoff to Ginobili. The defender steps up, alley oop under the basket to Giannis. So much going on, so much to defend. It is definitely tough, especially if you use all the options. So let me show you something else. If you get it to the small forward coming around and you don't like the shot, check it out. You get it back to the point guard, the play still continues. Now I run that pick and roll with Giannis. I don't give it over to the power forward. So we get the ball right here to Paul Pierce. I can take that shot, but let's say the defense is closing out. I want the play to continue. Just give it back to the point guard. The play is going to continue running. That's why I love this play. Now you go around the ball screen that Giannis is setting for you. You're attacking the lane. I can take this shot. My Scott Stockton has Hall of Fame range, so I can take a shot right there. If the defense steps up, now Giannis is rolling to the basket, and I can dump the ball down to him before even getting the ball over to the power forward. We didn't even have to go through the full play at all. Okay, now we call in the play with Paul Pierce, and we have Ginobili coming around the screens, who is not the best shooter from deep, but he can slash. And check out what happens. Ray Allen comes out a little high on those screens, and he's actually threatened to be able to defend it. He goes over. So I hold triangle. Remember to check out my passing tutorial. We're holding triangle to make him cut to the basket. As soon as Ray Allen goes high, he's playing too high. We cut back door. Ginobili has the lane to the basket now because we're holding triangle. We get the pass inside and now Ginobili is able to go up and KD is on the opposite side if we needed to kick it out for three. All right, we're on the last play, fist 25 zipper and I am not even gonna lie, this one is another banger. So let's go through the full play first. You see Ginobili comes down off of that down screen and now we get a pick and roll with him and Giannis. We get it up to Giannis for an alley-oop. And let's hit up that replay to see what's happening. So when you call the play, your shooting guard's getting a down screen from the small forward. Kick the ball over. And once you get the ball over to your shooting guard, you're going to be getting a screen towards the middle of the court. So I'm going to be going left off of the screen. While that's happening, 
since John Stockton's being played high, he's going to have a backdoor cut. He doesn't always cut. If he's being denied the ball, he will cut to give you an opening inside. If he's not being denied the ball, he'll stay outside and your center will pick and roll as well. We get inside. Would you know what? We got KD on the left corner, Paul Pierce on the right corner if anybody helps. And in most scenarios, your point guard will already have cleared out before you get into the lane. So he'll be gone already. So now we're going to run the play with Ginobili so that we can have John Stockton popping out for this shot. Although I like having the shooting guard pop out because I like to slash off of that screen better. But if John Stockton's popping off, we want to be able to have them closing out on that shot quickly so that we can come out and get into the lane easier. Since John Stockton can shoot way better than Ginobili, they might close out faster, getting you a better opportunity off of that screen. As you can see right there, Ginobili cut and then Giannis actually faded. If you have a shooting center, that fade is going to be fine, but they most likely will be rolling to the basket. I like the pick and roll version way better. So again, we get it to Ginobili popping. Now he has that quick first step. We get to the lane, threaten the basket, and then we throw it up to Giannis again. Now I can take those layups, but I just like throwing it up to Giannis because he's going to be able to finish those nicely. So again, coming up the court. We kick the ball out to Ginobili, who again, we want to be able to slash with. We go around the screen, and if the defense helps in that corner, we're kicking it out to KD. Easy shot, easy three. Anytime anybody helps in these plays, you're going to get an easy opportunity for a basket because the spacing is so good. And then, of course, you can take this shot if you want to. I like to take it if it's John Stockton or Paul Pierce or somebody like that popping out. But that screen and roll play and that alley-oop is very beautiful if you have somebody good that can slash. And you can get creative with this. You can use your point guard to create screens for that guy as well to make that shot a little bit easier for yourself. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. The rest of the video is going to be just me going through and using these plays against different users. If you guys like this, make sure to leave a like comment on the video, subscribe, share it. I'll be working on another playbook for you guys that should be out after I get all the testing done for it. Again, I test all these plays for you guys for a while to make sure they work in all different types of scenarios. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you in the next one. Be sure to hit me up on Twitter, Everyday RCA, and check me out on Twitch at RCA the Great. Have a good day, and I hope you enjoy it. Peace.